we're trying to understand nature. And in the past, the, the route to understand nature was always to, to understand what's going on at shorter and shorter distances. And we'll learn that there are molecules and atoms and elementary particles, protons, electrons, etc. And the idea of string theory is that at very, very short distances, the particles are no longer point-like, like point, but they are kind of loops of energy. And string theory is a description of these loops of energy. Supersymmetry is an excellent, very interesting idea. It will be terrific if it is experimentally confirmed. It might not. And that just means that nature did not pick this option. We'll have to think what nature did decide to do. Independent of that, supersymmetry is an intellectual idea has already proven itself to be extremely powerful and had many implications, both for theories of gravity, applications in mathematics, and applications in the study of field theory itself. So as an intellectual idea, it has already delivered quite a lot. Where the nature also picked to use it at this energy range explored by the LHC, we'll have to wait and see. For me personally, it will be extremely disturbing. So not finding supersymmetry will be disappointing, but not disturbing. Not finding anything, I think, will be very disturbing because we have very strong arguments that something has to be there. And not finding anything would really mean that the rationale behind these arguments is wrong. So that would tell us that we really missed something big. It's very, very difficult to come up with an idea that would be logically self-consistent and something that agrees with all the constraints we already have. We are really in a very, very tight box, and we have to work within a clear set, set of rules. So we cannot just run wild ideas. It doesn't work that way. And the structure we have is so rigid that it's hard to change anything. That's why I think it would be so disturbing if nothing is discovered, because it's very hard. There, there aren't that many moving parts that we could change. So maybe we need a radical idea. And my gut reaction is that it would be so radical that nobody has expressed it yet. But that's what makes it exciting. I think the biggest question that we face, and I would like to solve it, is what is the meaning of space and time? especially time, because there are strong reasons to believe that all the space that we see around us is kind of an illusion. It's not really there. And there are strong but not as strong arguments that time should also be some kind of an illusion. We just think that there is something like time. The fundamental theory doesn't have it. And I think that the biggest challenge and the most exciting thing that will happen is to understand how time emerges. It will answer a very long-standing question that philosophies, philosophers have been struggling with for centuries. And this is something that I think is within reach. It might take two years, it might take 10 years or 100 years, but it is not going to take another millennium to figure that out. And I hope it will be within our lifetime.